Welcome to another episode of Hair Biz Radio with your hosts, Zakira and Mikey. <laughs> and we are back again. We are going to be talking about photo and video media, basically, for your hair extension website. So there's a lot that goes into this just because you got to make sure the quality is good before Qual- you start. Quality is king. Yeah, yeah, it is. So, so let's start off like before... When private label extensions started, like websites and product photos and videos, how did we start doing? Well, we started. Yeah. And uh, actually, (laughs) it's funny. I was on a podcast yesterday promoting, Mm -hmm. uh, she wanted to interview me about my book, Mm -hmm. Fearless Beauty, The Hair (laughs) Business Blueprint. (laughs) Yes. Make sure you go grab a (laughs) copy. So, yeah, it's funny how it was just right there. Right. Just sitting there. This is the hardcover that's really nice. So, you can obviously get the soft cover or the (laughs) ebook, the Kindle version on Amazon, Fearless Mm -hmm. Beauty on Amazon. If you listen to this, if you've been listening to us for a while and you don't get this book, shame on you. Honestly, like I'm a little, I'm a little hurt. Like I'm a little mad at you. Okay. Cause this is your friend. This is your hair business's best friend. And when your hair business's best friend asks for help, which I've never done in never, eight years, never. this is the one time because I feel like this book will change your life. It's so important. Definitely. Right. Um, so yeah, I was on this, uh, the um, one thing that Mikey didn't say is after you buy the book, make sure you go and leave a review on Amazon. Yeah. You know, a, a good review. If you don't like the book, which is, you know, maybe you're, something's wrong with you. Um, I'll give you your money back. Just message me. I'll mail you, you know, if you bought the Kindle version for a couple bucks, I'll, I'll you know, send it to you. But uh, so I was on this podcast yesterday. Shout mm-hmm. out to Friends and Beauty. Uh, so it's a kind of a, they've been around for a year. Mm-hmm. And um, I actually sent her a link to our new podcast and how good this video looks. Like if you're watching on YouTube, this mm-hmm. looks pretty awesome. And I said, you know, just so you understand the growth Go look at our initial podcast. Woo! I don't even want to look at those anymore. <laughs> those those initial look at Dawi, our video out. What's up? Shout out, special shout out to our video guy, Dawi. He's like, what was going on? Dude, he looked at that. <laughs> he had three heart attacks, open heart surgery, and now he's back to work. Okay. <laughs> like those videos. Okay, but this is the thing. We didn't have any money. Right. So we had like the Canon. What was that? What Canon was that? The 3TI? Yes. We had the Canon 3TI and we were ballers. Or was it the Rebel? Is that the Yes, yeah, like the Rebel okay, 3TI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we thought we were ballers with that 50 mil <laughs> lens. That 50 mil 1.4. That was like a three or four three or four hundred dollar lens. Oh yeah. That was like at that time, I'm like, wait a second. I might not be able to eat for a week after getting this lens. <laughs> Like this lens, four hundred dollars. I mean, relative to these lenses now, are like oh yeah, these Dowie. Dowie came in. He's like Mikey. He gave me this whole list. I was like Dowie, do we do we want to get a Honda Civic or do we want to get some lenses? I was like, this is crazy, Dowie. You know, and, but you know, so the equipment makes a big difference oh, knowing yeah, how sure. to use the equipment. Mm-hmm. I think we both know how to use equipment a lot better over the years, right? For sure, right? So yeah. you can grow, and then you kind of can, can get an expert. Yep. You know, but yeah, if you, I'll actually put a link to maybe one of our first podcasts in the, in the show notes. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of click and link over and watch one of those old podcasts and be like, oh, wow, they weren't kidding. (laughs) Make sure you get one where my hair looks pretty decent. (laughs) Okay. I got you. I got you. I got you. She didn't have one of those new private label headband wigs where you can just throw right on that 22 inch (laughs) deep wave, Mm -mm, you know, so, uh, (laughs) So yeah, it's it's come a long way. So if you if you watch the first one, you can understand like, hey, everyone kind of starts for the most part starts here, right? So if you're there, it's okay, mm-hmm. right? Because you got to start somewhere, right? But you have to always focus on improving. Yeah, and I think being able to control the controllable. So although we had like that type of camera with the lens, um, some things we could have done differently maybe were recorded in a different space where the lighting was a little better, you know, or, um, we could have recorded on our phone and, you know, did something different with the background. So control the controllables. It's okay. And we'll get into, if you're using your phone, how to make sure you're properly, properly using your phone for video or photo. Yeah. Yeah, It's funny because we, we had like, um, one of those papers. So for like the models, we had this paper go across, but in the video (laughs) you saw like the rip, the 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 edges like tore off and it was like flapping a little bit when the AC would come on and we're like talking and you have these like paper, you know, you know, uh, yeah, it was like that pink. Remember it was like the pink background and the blue. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, man, can you believe that? Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> that was crazy back in the day. Yeah, that was about... 2015, no. Five we started, years ago. Oh, we started the ago. podcast in like 2017. Okay. So like late 2017. About four years ago. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's actually not that long ago though. It's not. It's really not. Yeah, so I mean, you know, we grew up a little bit. Oh yeah, a lot, a bit. So <laughs> okay. you know, part of, you got to figure part of like photography. So, you know, you basically in the hair industry, you're going to have two types of photography, mm-hmm. right? You're going to have product photos and then you're going to have like the model photos. Yep. Okay. Lifestyle. We call them lifestyle. lifestyle. Yeah. 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 See, I'm not a photographer. It's Zakira. So I'm, she's I'm lifestyle. not. <laughs> but, you know, the lifestyle, you know. So Zakira, what do you think, what are some tips for people that want need to shoot some product photos on different levels? What's some little things they can get or something that might help out um, with shooting these types of photos and getting good product photos? So one thing I would recommend is literally if you're just starting out and you say, hey, guys, I can't really go buy a camera and a lens, at least make sure you have an iPhone 11 or X, something that has a great camera on it that you can do portrait mode on. That that would be a great starter thing for your product photos. Um, the next thing I would say is choose a surface or a background that's going to be consistent that doesn't necessarily have to change. So if you could get something, maybe even like a white sheet or um, a white you know, piece of paper, big piece of paper, white poster board, um, there is a white like box light product box light we can put this in the show notes a link to it yeah from like, like photography Amazon. box yeah, yeah photography box um that you could get and you can shoot product in there with your iphone in portrait mode um so that's something that i would recommend as well just something that's going to be consistent to where your products on your website don't look like you took them just in the back seat of your car right you want to <laughs> yeah. make sure you want to make sure that they're at least professional and no one has to know that you use your iphone to shoot it yeah, I think the key, like, and when we talk product photography, these are probably products for your website. Correct. You have to, one of the keys I feel like is it has to be consistent. Yes. So like the lighting and everything, mm-hmm. you try to keep it consistent. Yeah. Now, one thing I did notice with shooting hair extensions over time, and especially getting into wigs, is a lot of those product photography boxes are pretty small. Yeah. They're made for like taking, a, uh, you know, a picture of your phone, or if you just got the new copy of Fearless Beauty, the hair business blueprint, <laughs> you know, is a, take a picture of this. Um, but, you know, so... They are, there are some larger boxes. So I'll try to leave a link in the show notes to one of the bigger okay. uh, light Product boxes yeah. because we have one that's a pretty good size for everything. I'll it's try to huge. get that one. It's big. <laughs> and then I got the big, big one that literally I can take pictures of Zakira in there. Oh, that's the one I was thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. The other <laughs> one's tabletop. The other one literally stands up on itself Oh yeah. because it's like, look, when Mikey's got the fifties, I got to make sure we get the full thing looking oh, yeah. good in there. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yep. Um, yeah. So you want to make sure that, you know, you're you're doing a great job with your photos. Same thing with video. Um, make sure that you're in a space that has great lighting. I always recommend, um, especially if you're shooting at home, do it during the daytime and somewhere that has a lot of good um, outside light shining in. So open up your windows um, and make sure you are recording if the sunlight is coming in beaming on your face that is the way you want to record right i said that right right yeah yeah right so you never want to record towards the sunlight because it'll give you like that background that you just don't want to make the subject or whatever you're shooting look really dark Dark, yeah yeah because it's trying to like overcompensate i don't know if that's the exact term but it's it's basically all that light is going into the lens yeah and messing things up for sure yep so you want to make sure that um, you don't do it that yeah, way. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then from there, if you're shooting with your iPhone, now you have these beautiful pictures because you either use the light box or you had some either, you can even use like soft box lights or ring light. Like you can use a ring light. Just make sure that, um, you know, the light setting on the ring light is the same, like Mikey was saying, consistent for each one of your products. Um, so you could do a, a, a ring light, just make sure the background and, Um, The setting on the light is consistent. And then when you go to upload those photos to your website, you want to make sure that they're all the same size. Like I've I've gone on websites and have seen like the rectangle pictures. And then next to that, it's like a triangle. And then next to that, it's A triangle? I've never seen a triangle photo. It's like a square. No, I'm I'm being dramatic. (laughs) Zakir's shopping, drinking tequila. No, I don't even like tequila. There's triangle (laughs) photos. No, seriously. But I've seen like rectangle photos, like the long ones and then like the ones that are way too long and then they're just not all consistent consistent and it drives me crazy actually you know <laughs> what it looks bad on a desktop 
But if you ever are like on a mobile phone, which most people are searching on their mobile phones mm-hmm. for products, and you do the swipe and they keep changing sizes. Yeah. Oh my God, I want to throw my <laughs> mobile phone out the window at somebody because it's so freaking annoying. Oh yeah. Yeah. Don't be that person. Mm-mm. A quick way, a quick tip on how to fix that is upload these product photos into Canva. Yep. And then just say, okay, for my website, obviously you're going to probably want a square. Mm-hmm. And it says, okay, I'm going to create a custom size, thousand by thousand. A uh, thousand pixels by thousand pixels, so it'll be a thousand pixel square. You don't want to go much bigger than that for a, a product photo. You right. don't need it bigger than that. The themes. So if you do two thousand by two thousand, all you're doing is making a much bigger file size, which is going to load slower on people's browsers when yeah. op- like going to each page and going to piss them off. You never need more than really a thousand. That I've seen more than a thousand by a thousand. Okay. What about the let like the least? What is the least you want um, to do? I would do no less than 600 by 600. Okay. Uh, a sweet spot's probably that 800 by 800. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's going to make a big difference. So you can put your product photos in there and you can kind of, one thing you, you can, uh, so if you guys use Canva, you put the photo into the square and mm-hmm. you can kind of arrange it. Yeah. One thing that mistake I've seen even our staff do is you want to maximize that space in there. So if you put the photo in, you want to make sure that the actual photo, like whatever that product is, like mm-hmm. if it was the Fearless Beauty book, just yeah. to give you an example, <laughs> you want the top of the book to be at the top portion and the bottom to be at the bottom. You don't want all this white space on right. top, white space on the bottom. Maximize the size within the product photo. That's a really great tip. Yep. Because then if you do that, it's all on the website and you have like these little bitty, you have all this white space on the site and it's like, whoa, why? I, you know what? Um, me and Dawi have been working a lot on my uh, hair business blueprint uh, YouTube channel, which mm-hmm. is doing really, really well. I have a one video. We actually did a podcast version of it for how to start a hair business for under $100. Oh, yeah. That video's got like about 14,000 views on nice. it. So it's doing pretty well. It's going to be a lot of subscribers. I might actually do like something, a little tutorial on about product photography. That would be really great. Yeah, yeah. I'll see if I can get that up and um, when this launches. So I'll have a link to that tutorial in there. And uh, because you love Hair Biz Radio so much, you're probably going to like Hair Business Blueprint, the YouTube channel too. So you yep. go ahead and, go ahead and just subscribe. <laughs> we, got some, we got some good tips and, you know, tutorials on there. But oh, yeah. I don't think sometimes like people are like, oh, that episode might be kind of boring, but this is like the knowledge that people are not going to tell you. And these are like the gems because this is so important for your website. Like it's absolutely incredible. Yeah. And it may not seem like it now because I know some people are just like, I just want to get the site up, but you will thank us. Honestly, like Mm -hmm. it's very important um, that you make sure one, your site is presentable because People look at that like I don't know many people that want to go to a site that is janky or, you know, not pretty to purchase things. I don't. (laughs) I mean, it's it's the user experience at the end of the day, right? So you want to create, always create a good user experience for your Mm -hmm. client. And we're in the beauty industry. So like the photos that you're using for your website and for your business are exponentially important because we're in the beauty industry and the beauty is all about visuals. Yep, for sure. Um, another thing is if you're uploading videos to your website, um, you want to make sure that, well, for one, you want to make sure that some of your product videos, some of your products also have videos on the actual product page. Yes. Um, and then what are the dimensions for the videos that they should use? So it depends. There's a couple ways to do it now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I normally previously didn't recommend this. I still say be careful. Okay. You can create really short videos that are um, same size, that square size. Mm -hmm. And you can have product videos within the carousel and upload them directly to say Shopify. Oh, gotcha. Okay. But what, when you do those, you want them really short, Mm -hmm. clean, simple, maybe just a pure white background, you know, example on private label extensions, the model walks in, looks, does a little hair flip and mm. walks out. It's maybe 10 seconds, yeah. probably seven seconds, six seconds. Yeah. And then that's it. If you have a little bit longer video, I like to upload them to Vimeo. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And it'll be a little bit more wide format. And then once it's on Vimeo, you can easily embed it into the product description, not one of the product carousel photos. Yeah. Now, one thing you need to realize, though, is shooting like we're so used to now that widescreen format, which is so beautiful for yeah. movies and everything else. But for mobile phones, the square format is actually better. And I'll tell you why. So you have your phone, right? And Mm -hmm. if you have uh, like a rectangle like this, 
it takes up this much. Oh, right. Yeah. But a square is like this. It takes up a bigger, it takes up more real estate. So the, the real estate with a square actually is better for your phone. That's why when I was working with Facebook on our ads, you know, our my ads manager always said, make sure you're making these square videos. Yeah. Right. So um, that's really important that it's just a small, it can maybe make just a one or 2% difference. Yeah. But really the difference between you being successful in the hair business and you not is first, whether or not you read the hair. Fearless Beauty, the hair <laughs> business blueprint. And second, these are gonna, facts. if you're mm-hmm. going to be very serious about these 1% improvements that you can mm-hmm. make for your business. I actually was live in our start a hair extension business group earlier today. And I was talking directly to them about this. Were you drinking coffee? And I was drinking coffee. <laughs> You know, so, but no, I'm serious. Like it's 1% difference Mm -hmm. that you have to focus on. So these little tips, once you like, you listen to it, it's all about implementing them. Oh yeah. Because it's going to make the difference between you being more successful than somebody else. Everyone complains about the hair industry being so, uh, so uh, saturated, saturated, right? So how do you stand out from the crowd? You take these little tips seriously and you get them implemented for your business. Yep. And one thing that we also talk about, we've talked about a million times outside of this podcast, but um, making sure that when you're uploading photos to your website, that you're making sure that they're compressed. And we talked about in our previous podcast episode, right before this one, um, some apps on Shopify and WordPress that will allow you to actually compress those photos automatically. Um, But if you don't use one of those, you can go to compressor.io and make sure that all of the photos that you're uploading on your website are compressed because that is going to help your site not run slowly. Yeah. And actually a new feature within both two of our favorite online photo editing tools, Mm -hmm. PicMonkey and Canva, they both now have like, so PicMonkey has one where it's like high, medium, and low, uh, where you download the photo and mm-hmm. you can download a lower resolution. You don't need that high resolution photo. Yeah. Okay. And Canva has a little slider. Stand, the standard is usually set at 80%. Mm-hmm. And you can actually move it down a little bit and download it. You're not visually going to be able to really notice a difference in quality. But as far as how fast that photo loads on a website, it's mm-hmm. going to make a difference. Check Canva out. <laughs> yeah, so, that's, so Canva kind yeah. of built that in. Mm-hmm. And what people really need to worry about, people are like, why are you so worried about these photo sizes? A couple of reasons. First, most importantly, is the user experience. When people go onto a website and say they don't have the best connection. Yeah. Right? If you're on 5G, you might not notice, right? Close to a 5G tower, but we're not always on 5G. Mm-mm. So say this big photo or it's like one of the header photos, images that can get really large in size. Yeah. You know, if it's not optimized, it can take a while to load. Then the whole site is loading slow and it's really annoying someone. And I don't know about you. I, I did it the other day. Uh, the website, I was looking for some um, shorts and the website took like entirely too, too long. And I was like, forget it. I'm just going to go to this other site. And I was like, mm-hmm. just like that. Just, yeah. So this, <laughs> this happens, guys. Like mm-hmm. you might not be thinking or even noticing that this is happening, but this is happening, right? So yep. don't let it happen to your business. Mm-mm. And then second is Google knows when people, when Google's kind of tracking now, one of their newer things is the user experience. Yeah. If someone goes on the page and they're there for two seconds and bounces off, that increases what's called your bounce rate. And once your bounce rate starts going up, Google's like, oh, everyone's just bouncing off this page. Why am I even bother showing people? Why Why are we ranking this page? Yeah. If everyone's just getting off, Google sees everything. Mm-hmm. Why, are we, why are we showing? We got to show something else. So if you're optimizing your photos and someone else's, think about this. They're going to stop showing the people that don't have optimized and maybe start moving you because you listen to the podcast and optimize your photos, <laughs> start moving those photos so up. Yep. Yeah. I think that's important. I think so too. (laughs) Yeah. So what about photography with models? Oh, yeah. So I would recommend hiring a photographer for model shoots. I think it's worth it. Yeah, it's definitely worth it because you'll have the photos for forever. You can repurpose them so many different times. You can use them for your website, for marketing material, um, promotional stuff, social media uh, YouTube, you can use them for so many different things, um, branding for a lot of different stuff. But I think that it's an important, it's important that you invest in a photographer for your model photos. You're, yeah. Yeah. Cause I think like, you got to remember a photo shoot with just one model is an investment, right? You have the hair. Hair is mm-hmm. not cheap. Mm-mm. 
you have the hairstylist. Mm -hmm. If you are a hairstylist, maybe you can save some costs by doing the hair yourself. Right. Right. And then you have the cost of the model. Mm -hmm. Right. So maybe the model will work for the hair. Um, you know, we generally at private label, we like to pay the model. And then sometimes, depending on the model, we'll give them hair or depending on the wig or something, you know. So, But a lot of times we just like our last headband shoot, I gave her a couple headband wigs. Yeah. You know, so... It's one of those things like you're probably going to end up giving them the hair too. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then if you don't have a studio space or the photographer doesn't have a studio space, you might be renting that. Right. Guys, this is adding up. You need to make sure those photos look good. Yeah, because what will happen is, is if, if you're just using random people and you're doing the hair and they're getting their makeup done and then you go and take the pictures yourself, one, or you take them on your iPhone, they're not going to come out as great as they should because you're not going to have like, that detail you're not going to have the details and you just want it to be you want it to be good you want it to be really good especially yeah. if you're investing and you got to think like okay so if you take a photo with your iphone mm -hmm. right like it looks good on the computer screen right but there might be times that you're going to print this photo oh yeah now if you drive by private label here in atlanta mm -hmm. or maybe charlotte private label detroit private label greenville coming lithonia <laughs> you'll notice we use a-frame signs yeah right it's the sandwich board signs mm -hmm. right i call it a-frame signs now we print the model photos, some of the model photos on these bigger kind of like, I don't know, it's like a plastic cardboard, yep. right? I guess it doesn't really make sense. Does it a plastic cardboard? <laughs> you ever think about that? It does. But it looks like it, right? It does. Yeah. But you print, if you just take it with your iPhone, the resolution and the quality might not be good enough to mm -mm. print on these plastic cardboard pieces mm -mm. or if you wanted to do a banner banner because you're going to be like us at the Bronner brothers here in August in new Orleans, right? Shout out to my friends at Bronner brothers. What's <laughs> up? Um, so like for something like that, you're going to need a higher resolution photo. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know? And honestly, these days, you know, I mean, let's not include Dowie because Dowie is very special. Yeah. You know, he's very sensitive. So you got to be careful talking about Dowie. Okay. <laughs> no, he's not, but it, you want to also hire a good photographer that has mm -hmm. a good camera equipment. For sure. Right? Yeah. Because people, you know, it's just important. But you also have to figure, like, that camera equipment can go a long way. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, opposed to 10 years ago, a lot of people got nice camera equipment these days. A lot. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, Mr. F Mr. or Miss Photographer, you're not the only one in town. <laughs> You know, so you might be able to get away with like a kind of aspiring photographer. Yeah. A student at Georgia State or like if you're in Atlanta, whatever your local college is yep. that's looking for a project. You got to be resourceful, guys. Yeah. Like Utilize social media. There's a lot of photographers who um, are really new. They post pictures. Some of them e even post like um, certain story posts and are like, hey, looking for someone to shoot to expand my portfolio. Like, look out for those as well. And even if you look up a hashtag, let's just say you're in Minnesota. If you look up with the hashtag Minnesota photographer, like there's so many photographers that you can find, reach out to, see who's new, see who's old, and just, yeah, find someone that way. Zakir, have you ever been to Minnesota? No, but <laughs> how did she come up with Minnesota? That was so random. I was just thinking about, I don't know. I actually, I was having a conversation about Minnesota yesterday. <laughs> oh, really? Tell us about it. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you know, and same goes for video. Like there's a lot of videographers out there. A lot of people are just looking for not just jobs, but jobs to help build up their portfolio. Yeah. You know, so the videographer portion, if you're going to go ahead and get all this stuff done with photos, you might as well have someone there shooting some video. Correct. Yes. You know, because the video at the end of the day is probably going to be more powerful for you than the photos. Yeah. You can use the video for social media, your website. Facebook, Instagram ads. Yeah. All of that. TikTok. Mm -hmm. Instagram um, reels. reels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All that. Yeah. Snapchat. People still use Snapchat? <laughs> yeah. People still use Snapchat. The stock's doing well. <laughs> look, look. Snapchat, BitTorrent coin. <laughs> Things are going up. Those. <laughs> we were talking about, just so you guys know, in the previous episode and then early, we were talking about some cryptocurrency. We just put a little, we sprinkled a little money in. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. but the Bitcoin, 
BitTorrent <laughs> coin. And it's actually, because we can go back to this podcast like a year later, and I'll actually give you a pretty cool fact is uh, we can go back to this podcast a year later and maybe the BitTorrent coin went up. Like it's just under a penny still. Mm -hmm. So maybe it went up and then everyone's like, oh my God, remember you guys were talking about that? Yeah. Because two things actually. One, Bitcoin, we talked about me and my developer were like 10 years ago when it was like a dollar. Oh, wow. I wish I had a few of those. Um, and then they're at like 52,000 now, right? I know. Yeah. I really didn't need to buy too much and I would have been done, done. Done, okay? done, son. <laughs> um, but another one was somebody went back, one of our amazing Hair Biz Radio listeners, mm -hmm. they went back and started listening from the beginning. And this is from a couple years ago. And actually in an episode a couple years ago, I was talking about writing a book. Nice. And I was like, wow. I just thought, <laughs> to me, they said that. It was like in our Facebook group, the Starting mm -hmm. Hair Extension Business Facebook group. That was so special to me. I said, because I know I'd been talking about it for a while. Yeah. And, and you know the reason why, if you go back a couple episodes and listen to uh, the episode where Zakir and I were talking about the book and yeah. the process and why now, opposed to back in 2017, right? Uh, but that was really interesting. So you know what? I'm putting it out there. Doggy coin, Dodge coin, whatever <laughs> you call that thing. And then BitTorrent coin that's under a penny. Ooh, yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. It's really cool. Yeah. You know, but we appreciate the 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 listeners that go back. You yeah, know, I love when people say they they listen to like episode three. I'm like, really? What? <laughs> really? That's, I'm what gonna, episode I, are I actually, we even at? I, you know what? Um, episode 45, 47? No way. Yeah. No way. Yeah, that's it. Mm -mm. Yeah, but I think I think like right now that you know we had a break, guys, for a while because of COVID. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. And you know we just everyone was home, whatnot. And we didn't really want to do the Zoom meetings ones. Yeah. Um, you know, although the Zoom, I think, have come back. Like, it's come a long way, but it's still, there's nothing like this. Yeah. Um, so we didn't really do many podcasts, which I kind of missed. You know, I definitely missed. And mm -hmm. I mean, uh, podcasts, are, these podcasts are great. I love it. I love the podcast. <laughs> yeah. So let's get back real quick. What other quick tips? Um, the lighting. So like in here, if you're watching on YouTube, we have great lighting. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have these lights so you can see like the colors. I don't know what I would call those. They're like these LED color strips. Also, if you can see, if you're creating a background, make sure you water your plants. Okay. <laughs> Look, my plants are blurred out. First of all, <laughs> Dallas Christopher, I need help with these plants. Okay. Because he picked, he bought these plants, these dead plants. These okay. Plants are like, they're screaming for water. Guys. I know. I need, to, I need to get my girlfriend in here because she is like a plant expert. I don't think she can bring those. Back she to can't life, bring but. these back, but she can give me tips on how to keep the other plants yes, alive. Yes, you can. Yes. And that's girlfriend is Mary Margaret. She has a, a portion in the book here. It's yes. not Rihanna. I know a lot of you guys think I'm dating Rihanna. <laughs> I'm not. Okay. So. Um, yeah, so shout out to Mary Margaret with her amazing portion in the book and uh, being yeah. amazing with plants. Mm -hmm. um, because actually I did a pod podcast and I have the nice setup, right? So mm -hmm. the lighting and the video and everything is real important when if you're doing recordings for mm -hmm. live videos and all this, the first thing the, the interviewer said was, wow, really nice plants. And I was like, yeah, they are. <laughs> We're pretty proud, proud of these plants. Yep. You know, so um, having good lighting and actually when you were talking about lighting, a quick thing that I learned later on mm -hmm. was I never forget was I my first product photography back in 2006. I had all of these lights and it was so bright in there. But mm -hmm. when I took a photo, it was dark. Mm. The reason why was I didn't know there's different color temperatures of lights. Oh, yeah. And now we've come a long way in 15 years mm -hmm. of product photography and video lighting. Like I used to, when we used to shoot videos, these big light boxes and the the lights had fans and it was this whole mess <laughs> and it was so expensive. Now we have these nice, beautiful LED panels mm -hmm. and, you know, Dowie got us all hooked up in here making me buy all these expensive gear, Dowie. <laughs> but um, these LED panels, so there's temperatures on the light. If mm -hmm. you're at like 3,600, it's more of that yellow kind of look. But if you're getting at like 56 or I think it's 56 or 5700 is the temperature, it's that crisp, clean light. And for the most part, you're going to want that enough. crisp, yeah. clean light for your photos and videos. So those are the light boxes they should purchase. Yeah. So okay. the, I'll, I'll try to link over in the description to uh, some of the lighting we use. It's actually pretty cool. Like some of these are roll up LED panels. Mm -hmm. So you can actually fold this thing up. And then I have one at my oh, house yeah. where it's like this circle that I use for interviews. And it's like this circle and it's like a flat panel. And I was like, this lighting is pretty damn cool. 
<laughs> it's come along, but it's not that expensive. Yeah. And you, you know? can get it off Amazon. Right? And you can get it off Amazon. Like we, we got some of the, like not the cheapest ones. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's called like newer is one of the brands. That's like pretty cheap, but honestly, for most people, it's going to work great. Yeah. And it's going to make all the difference in the world. Lighting is everything with photo and video. It really is. Yeah. Cause you can have a good camera and everything else, but if your lighting's bad, it's going to be bad. It's not going to be great. Yeah. You know, so get, make sure you invest some time in lighting and then um, maybe if you're getting more serious into it, uh, definitely do some research, watch some tutorials on YouTube, um, learn how to use your camera, whatever camera you have. The settings. The settings everything. and yeah. other kind of stuff. Like I was just trying to do this uh, this one podcast and I was like, it doesn't look right. I'm like messaging Dawi. He's making videos like, no, <laughs> just turn this dial and fixed it because it was like totally white, uh, like just kind of overexposed, mm -hmm. you know, so there's some settings. Once you get some of these more expensive cameras, yeah, you're going to have to spend a little bit of time learning how to use that camera. Yeah. And then even if you're doing, if you're taking the product photos yourself, um, but you're not good at editing or you don't understand it, you can always go on Fiverr and pay someone to edit the, the photos for. Zakir always you know. says Fiverr. I like Upwork. Upwork, Upwork a little freelance. more professional. Yeah, it is a little more professional. You know, yeah. freelancers, kind of more the overseas people. You can get some deals, but, you know, Upwork yeah. is a little bit more professional. It is. You know, but you can try. You might be able to get a deal from someone on any one of the platforms. It's mm -hmm. worth a shot. Sometimes yeah. if it's cheap to get a photo edited, it's maybe worth a shot. Maybe yeah. they're good and just can get it done quick for you. If I will give you a tidbit, though. If you are using Fiverr, I would recommend finding someone that's like a level two seller and someone who has a lot of reviews that you can see some of their work. I that's didn't even know there's saying. levels. Yeah. Like Fiverr is they're they're they stepping up their game. Are they? <laughs> they yeah. got different levels now. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to find someone who's like really good at what they do. They, they actually have some of the, you know, how on Upwork and Freelancer, they have like the, what is this person good at? The skill sets. Mm -hmm. They have that on Fiverr too. So oh, okay. you want to just make sure you find someone that, has receipts. Yeah. Oh, Zakir's <laughs> all about the receipts these days. <laughs> so yeah, Fiverr stepping up their game. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, where, where do you think is a good place to find a photographer or videographer? Social media? And yeah, Instagram is literally probably going to be your best bet. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe a Google search. You could do Google search. Yeah. But yeah. I, I don't think that because a lot of these people aren't doing SEO strategy and all of that stuff. Yeah. So you will find photographers on Google for sure. But I think through through Instagram, you'll probably find more of like those aspiring photographers. If you're gotcha. looking for someone kind of newer who can work with your budget, I think Instagram would be a lot better for that. And how yeah. much budget do you think someone needs to have to hire somebody for a couple hours? So including hair, makeup, and all that, or just photographer? Just a photographer. Okay. you If you can find a photographer anywhere from 150 to probably 500 would be safe to say. 150 to 500. That's like, do you want this camera or do you want this Ferrari? <laughs> okay. So, for example, if you're finding an aspiring photographer, some may say, okay, I'll shoot for an hour for 150 or I'll shoot – for two hours for a couple looks for 300 like it just depends i think okay. but if you're looking for a professional upscale someone like a dowie i don't know what dowie charges but if you're looking for a really great photographer be prepared to spend at least 500 dollars. okay yeah and does that include editing photos or is that yeah that include files? editing photos. okay so yeah. that includes some edits mm -hmm. yeah because editing editing takes time yeah you know, even mm -hmm. especially for video stuff, like it's one thing to shoot. You might shoot for, say, you know, one hour. So, like, if you shot one hour, Dawi, give me a nod. How long is it going to take to edit? Like three hours, four hours per hour? M maybe even more, right? Four or five yeah, four or five plus hours. So for how many pictures? No, that's for for the video. Oh, for the video. So if you're okay, shooting yeah. like an hour worth of video, for you to get a, a nice video out of it, it might take another four or five hours. Yeah. So think about that if they're making the video for you. But these are the kind of things you want to know going into it hiring because you're like, yeah. this guy shot for an hour and they want to charge me $500. Yeah. This guy well, makes more than my lawyer. Video may be more expensive. Yeah. I know, but I'm saying you yeah. got to think of that if they're making that video for you, what that includes oh, on yeah. the back end. Yeah. That there's another five hours included yeah. of making this video because it's one thing like for me editing videos, I can do some quick little edits, this, that, yeah. and the other. But like when Dawi edits the videos, Dawi's like the new celebrity on the show, by the <laughs> way. Okay. But when Dawi edits it and he does like the color correction stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm like, Dawi, you making me look 
good. <laughs> I mean, oh my God. Like, re re ready. Okay. Re re ready. Re re ready over here. So it's Riri just. Re like, re is Rihanna. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. By the way, shout out to Rihanna. I have your bundle waiting. I have the 70 inch, 600 gram bundle that everybody's trying to get. And I said it's safe for you. Uh, so when you're ready, um, I will personally deliver it to you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Anything else you want to add about photos, video? I mean, I think that's a good start. Yeah, like, I if think you go so over too. that, just get into it a little bit. Yeah. Just don't get like convinced into some huge expensive package when you yeah, don't have no. experience. Yeah. You're going to get swindled, dindled, like just, you know, save your money. Yeah. Just make sure you look at whoever you hire, make sure you look at their work to make sure that it's going to be quality that you want your brand to rep- rep- be represented by. Right. Yeah. For sure. Yep. So this was another episode of Hair Biz Radio. Make sure you guys go and grab a copy of Fearless Beauty, Mikey's book. If you have not yet, um, literally, Mikey has tons and tons and tons of years of experience of entrepreneurship, marketing, um, just you name it, hair hair business, everything. Um, so the book is not just for people in the hair industry. If you're an entrepreneur, you can learn some things from this book as well. So make sure you go on Amazon, grab a copy of the book and leave a review. And while you're at it, make sure you check out other episodes of Hair Biz Radio. Leave us a comment, leave us a review, subscribe on YouTube if you want to see us too. And make sure you stick around and check out more episodes. Later. (laughs) 